Action. Who did? Action. Action? Action. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we've got a few people on vacation or out today or unable to make it due to other commitments, but I don't think it's going to be a very long meeting. I just wanted to go through, give you folks an update as to where we are with the chrono system, talk about Docstar. Hi, Ann. Hi. Talk about um, Docstar, which did a presentation at the commissioner's meeting last Wednesday. How did you think that went, Becky? Pretty well? It was interesting, uh, yeah. making them understand what the difference is, what the advantage is. Um, I don't know where we stand with that. I thought it went well, but then when I reviewed the tape, I see they mentioned something about possibly going out to bid. Yeah, I saw that too. I don't know why. Because there, I mean, I know there's software out there, but there isn't that many other companies out there that do this. And mm -hmm. if you break it down for the rental per year, it's twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah, so it should my be fire necessary. cabinets pay for that in a year. Yeah. What's so that stuff? It's the electronic <coughs> file cabinet that we had a presentation on. It's basically electronic record keeping, which is great for all facets of the complex, except I think you folks already have something in place, but it might even mm -hmm. piggyback onto that. What it does, um, you never have to sale, save another piece of paper. Everything from receipts to medical records to personnel files, everything can be segregated, scanned in, sent off somewhere, and it's so easy to pull up those files. Um, mm -hmm. Once it's scanned in, it's a legal document that cannot be altered, so you'd have to pull it back out to your desktop if you wanted to make a change. But then it tracks all of those changes as well. So it virtually eliminates that whole vault that we have here of documents. It would be super for medical records for you folks, even for you. For so for each department would have this yep. scan? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, if it comes in by email, like if your vendors would send you your, their invoices by email, you could add that all together with a purchase order so that you wouldn't have to well, put it down in the leases box and everybody gets their piece of paper. Everybody could tie into that PO order and see that all the paperwork's there and send out the check. You could have a, you could reference your invoices by company, by product, by... All of your inmate records. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing. What I liked about it is the ease of use. It's like doing a Google search. You just pick out a keyword, and it'll give you a list of all the documents that it has with that in it. Um, so if you depends on how you file things. If you file things like invoices for you or inventory. Menus. Menus, yeah. Recipes. Exactly. Right. You could put something that says chicken, and it would pull up every document that says chicken in it. Mm -hmm. And then you could limit and so forth. So it's like an electronic file cabinet. It's the easiest way to explain it, that we could get rid of a lot of file cabinets, a lot of paper, and a lot of copying. And because anybody can access it, they can't change it. Mm -hmm. What's good for us is it's going to keep an audit trail so that people can go in and see who's backtracked through old records and stuff like that. But it's good for anybody that wants to see who's accessed any record because it will do an audit trail on it automatically anytime it's accessed. Mm -hmm. So the needs for the voluminous file cabinets that you have to keep everything forever um, yeah, would be I mean gone. For personnel records too. Right? Oh my gosh! So you can scan everything. You know, if you issue a counseling report or mm -hmm. a note to the employee about yes, you know, yep. absentee slips. You know. I mean, it would be so much easier to pull those that stuff up. And there's walls between it. So in other words, you folks couldn't access my records. I can't access yours. Um, you couldn't even go in and look at mine. I'd have to give you Permission availability for it. for it. But everything is stored, too. It's stored off-site and then off-site again. It's like with the cloud. So it's cloud-based. Cloud cloud nice. It's too cloud-based. It's actually stored here. It would be stored available on our server. Then it backs up once a night to a place and hooks it. And from hooks it, it backs up to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So nice. it's actually two clouds that, so it'd take a major catastrophe to knock it down so you couldn't access documents. Yeah. Yeah. And so. you can keep it indefinitely as long as you pay, I think he said, what, it's $485 or something like that. Maybe it's 600 a year to keep all your, all your documentation. The whole even after you, you've completed the contract, it's only 625 a year to keep everything that's been put in Darkstar for indefinitely, as mm -hmm. long as you pay that 625 a year. 
it does sound very good. So the way it was left, um, the commissioners took it under advisement. Not sure if it's something that has to go out to bid or not, um, but they've at least presented now, I think, three times here. Um, what about the scanners? Do we need scanners to do it? Your yep. regular desktop, if your printer has a scanning function, it'll do it right off that. All our big printers do. Mm. But as he said, you don't scan, you don't backtrack. What, especially like in medical records, I could have somebody scanning for the next 10 years probably standing there. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you pick a date, mm -hmm. and from that date forward, everything that comes in automatically goes into it. Then as you need to access it, say I need to access a record, then we would scan that record in at that time and it will link the two together so that you'll have it by name or whatever. So you pick a date, go forward, and then back scanning. I mean, we even went so far as telling the commissioners that way all their minutes could be put right in. Oh, yeah. And everything, all their town reports, everything that they do in paper now, then if the secretary got the minutes done, she could put it right into DocStar to see what the original is, send it to all the commissioners. They can add their comments. It's like sticky notes that it adds comments to. Send that out. If it's approved, the minutes can be amended, but you've got the original, the changes that they wanted done and then you've got a completed copy with approved. the date and you've got the track that says this happened when and who did it. Yeah. That would be nice. I mean it just <laughs> saves so much paper and chasing and climbing and mm -hmm. yeah so more to follow on that I think it's something that I mean the technology that's coming or that's out there already but more that's coming is just amazing it'll make our lives so much easier and Anne, I think even for you what did you say about the raised documents that you can or cannot you can't, can't. That's we, can't. we can't we can't even we're not even in this mix okay because everything's got a seal on it well you know that I mean our, we're already set up everything we have is going to be an exact match to the document for for plugging it in I mean it does does different things but our records are official records yeah so are ours no no I but yours have got the seal that's the difference anything has got a raised seal well, we, can't go we darken it. the seals you know we have to copy it in order to do that mm -hmm. um, do you have that's your record keeping there's, a, there's another aspect of your department that would be able to participate in this like what your invoicing your, your bills for your budget stuff you know, you already right. have such a good system in place for your, for your documents. Right. But that but I would have to have another system just for that, because everything we do is kind of Connor. So. Which you could come into our office and, I mean, your bills aren't that are very, much volume to them. You know what I'm saying? You That's what do I'm saying. It's almost not worth it to me to do use. something different. You, know? you don't use Iron Mountain for storage or anything, nope. do you? Not anymore. They used to. They used to. Took it all out of there. That's expensive. I didn't realize they charge no, you no. to no. store. They charge you to go in and get things, and they charge oh, they you to charge put them back everything. in. I I took <laughs> and took blink. out. We brought back thirty something boxes, mm -hmm. and uh, most of them went got reorganized because a lot of it's microfish and right. microfilm rather, and uh, reorganized that everything that we had on other kind of media, uh, worm platters, CD ROMs, whatever. Um, you know that takes that takes such a huge amount puts it on this little thing right. anyway um, I have it now at okay. uh, Laconia Savings Bank in a uh, locker okay. in a storage locker which is amazing but everything you have on a CD-ROM could go into the system yeah. and you could access it anytime you want I don't want driving another system this is totally secure so the system one. is totally secure I, I, I don't go anywhere else I don't know of any other registry that combines their softwares with anything else. Because hmm. a lot of them are doing it now because this is a backup electronic hospitals. system. Yeah. Department of Revenue in Massachusetts is Depar using this. Department of Defense in Massachusetts is using this system too. Mass General Hospital is using it. So well, if we're going to go, if we end up going with it, that's when they'll come and give you the sales pitch. And well, it's not even that, but it, no offense, Laconia Banks. Safety deposit box isn't anymore. Isn't very secure. If the bank gets robbed and they break into the security boxes, your all your data is gone. They can't go into our um, into the lockers. Well, it's something to think These about. These are safety deposit. They'd have to have a key for every locker. It's something don't. to think about. We I do. mean, I think you're going to see all different 
types of businesses going to this sort of cloud storage just for security and ease of retrieval. Mm. The days of keeping these boxes and boxes that are subject to the elements, rats, everything else oh, they were that's there. out there. Yeah, <laughs> They were there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I am um, is the other sales point we made for the commissioners, though, which is even more important than boxes and stuff like that, mm -hmm. is if one of us happened to not be around tomorrow, yeah. somebody doesn't have to go, oh, how did they file that? Where might they have kept it? What's They can mm -hmm. actually go out yeah. and find the information they're mm -hmm. looking for. Yeah. Okay. So, again, we'll figure out more on that. But does anybody have any questions on that? It's, Is that spelt something it. that's coming this year or next fiscal year? We're hoping this year. This year. Was, was that different? That the presentation that you had, was that different than the one we had at the last meeting? No. Same guy. Okay. No. Same thing. I just didn't know if they had done something different. No. So, next thing. Um, John Rich put together, let me give you one of these, Sam. Um, the commissioners had asked, and so did the delegation, had asked for an inventory of our computers. I think he's going to present this tomorrow. Um, so he did it by department of what we have. They're all listed on here along with the date purchase, the warranty expiration, and the scheduled replacement date. So it'll give you some idea, if you have no idea, um, as to when the date of your equipment or the age of it and when it's supposed to be recycled for budgeting purposes. Um, I think the jail has quite a few on here for 2014. That's yes, all of them. That's a lease, I think. Oh, is it? Right, probably. Is that, do you know what, is that? Pat, is that a lease that you guys have on that equipment? Well, it says purchase I don't believe date, so. warranty I believe it was info. Purchased. Maybe it was just financed. <coughs> I don't know what it was. There's um, quite a few on there for 2014. Same with the sheriff's office. You've got several, a couple in 2013. And that, I think, in the not too distant future, there's going to be, they've been talking about. A master plan for the county, um, putting together a, some sort of a group that will look toward everything from um, facilities. Like, uh, what am I thinking? Help me out, somebody. Um, <laughs> re redoing roofs to a uh, boiler systems, heating systems, a capital improvement plan. Is that what I'm trying to say? I'm sorry. The lighting, electrical. Light. Yes. So a capital improvement committee as part of a master plan for the county um, and IT and wish needs will be part of that looking out three years five years ten years fifteen years IT is probably going to be the most difficult one to predict because we have no idea where we're going to be at that point what's going to be out there for technology um, but it's something to start thinking about because I know they will be looking um, for input from this committee. In addition to, I think, um, Cybertron's contract is going to be up within the next year and a half. So that's, again, something that we don't want to wait till the last minute to start looking right. to see what we're going to do with that. Um, so start, you know, if you can start thinking about needs, wish lists, the different technology that's out there that would make us more efficient, spend our dollars a little bit more wisely. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Kronos. We were supposed to have a presentation tomorrow by the gentleman that sold it to us along with his boss. And apparently they're not coming. They were going to come into the commissioner's meeting. Um, we need to come up with some additional funds from what they are telling us in order to fully implement the rest of Kronos along with the scheduling piece. I don't feel comfortable trying to explain to the commissioners why we need it, how it differs from the different pieces that we bought, and could ask them to come in and do it, but they're not coming. Um, but first, I want to make sure now every department should be able to be punching in with it. So you're still not able to? No, it works sometime. It works not Is sometime. it the clocks that aren't working? Is it certain people's numbers that aren't working? Some people's slide cards still work and not their numbers. Some people's numbers Can you work. start taking notes yep. find out who it is? Because that's just, I could have overlooked one person and the swipe card is still now working. Now are we supposed to start punching in by numbers? Starting by numbers. When? They're all in there. 
they're all in there now, so you can do it at any time. Yeah, as well our dietary as is. Okay, good. As activities, I know, had tried, and then some of her numbers didn't work, so she quit because it was people were just getting too frustrated. So mm -hmm. I will ask people to keep a list. Huh? I haven't heard any complaints. In the jail, all your folks are able to do it? Yeah, we do. No problems. Okay. Okay. And yeah, I'm just going to ask you if the, the test part that we were part of, um, whether that actually matched up to the it did. time sheets. Yes. I mean, my our hours are all the same right. within five That's minutes. That's why of I each picked other. you folks yeah, as the I very know. first group, <laughs> and then the jail because Pat is you know, on top of the Kronos piece. Um, you folks, I'm going to be meeting with Teresa and Rich Young this afternoon to try to figure out <coughs> how we're going to make this happen. I know people that are here in the building, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I think we already, I mean, it's a, I don't think anything's changed. I mean, that You can pay per schedule, so that the deputies have a schedule in there, and if they run into overtime, then either uh, chief deputy or... Teresa puts in, the you put in the overtime, and at the end you'll just hit it. So it, it's to me it's simple. I, I don't, okay. It's not a big deal. It's just the deputies can't swipe in and swipe out because right. they go. They sign They're not on, here. They sign on. Uh, there's, mm -hmm. Sometimes there's two weeks when the deputy doesn't get down here. So. Right, and bailiffs as well because they're never here. Correct. Yeah, yeah. They report right across the street. So we could you just put the schedule in, and uh, like we sign on with dispatch, so they can. Mod I mean, everything's checked and double checked and. Okay. But yeah, as far as Chronos goes, we just put our schedule in. It's out there, and if, if someone's schedule changes, then we'll just change that for that mm -hmm. week, and it's pretty simple. But someone needs to sign off on that too. I mean, we're not to that point yet that you're going to be approving hours and, and transferring it over. The, sign off on the on the at the end of the week on the schedule. Yes. Yeah, no, we do. Anyways. It should be a daily thing, really, until you get the hang of it. Like dispatch to make sure that they haven't missed a punch midstream, because what happens is right. if they forget to punch out the next day, they come in. Their in time shows us yeah. an out time, and it right. gets all. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we were. Um, no, we we have someone who signs off on all our payroll. Okay. I mean, either myself or the chief do every week, so it's. Mm -hmm. I don't see it being a big issue, really. So you still have the issue of people that are not scheduled as M and A's being M and A's and not having that. <coughs> you can't transition them. They start the day as an M and A, even though they're listed in the system as an L and A. We can right now when they were doing their M and A's when they're doing their sugars because the staff wouldn't understand that as it is. Because that's a drop down pay code menu. Mm. We'll have to talk with Bob about how to... Well, he said to transition them. They're not transitioning, though. They're M and now I've got all the M&As turning into l &As once a month because they have to for their nursing hours. So. But we should be able to, through Kronos, be able to allocate hours to different departments to transfer them right on the... like. Do you know when a schedule comes out, when they're doing their M&A, and when they're doing like what hours? No, it could be because somebody called in sick and they're an M&A okay. that day. So yours is going to be a little bit more labor-intensive. Mm -hmm as we expected, but it is still going to require working daily on them because of call-outs, vacation days, personal days. Yeah, there's a all lot of stuff to maintain. There is, and until we are fully comfortable, we've got to operate both systems. The next piece that Kronos has to do, I'm waiting for the information from Kathy Gary, is transfer over all of the accruals because they're not accurate in Kronos. No, they're not. They're not. And that creates issues when people try to put in a sick day and there's no time there. It will not let you put the right, sick day we're, in. Right. We're running into that now. Mm -hmm. I've talked to them already about that, that certain departments need to be able to go into the negative, like you folks. Yeah, Nobody I mean, else goes into the negative. Never mind even the negative. If they have sick time on the books that I know they've got sick yeah. time on the books and it's not in Cronus, right. you, can't put a you can't put a time right. frame in there. It will not let you. You have to put a comment in and put it as zero, zero pay mm -hmm. because it won't accept it. That will take care of itself when the accruals come up, but right. it's still not going to help you with you allow people to um, take a holiday or vacation day or whatever. Holidays. A month in advance. Or something, so they may not have accrued that time yet, but we still, per the contract, still have to allow mm -hmm. them to do it. So they have to be able to go into negative numbers, and that's something that they have to program it for. Well, it's going to be hard because we manually keep track now, so some people don't get two birthdays and they don't get two mm -hmm. Thanksgivings, and they can take it in pay and not in time. Well, we don't and want negative sick pay, do we? No. So that. No, yeah, I like but I the, say they can take the it. Lid on that they one. can take it in <laughs> pay, or they can take it in hours, or. 
That's why I said it'd be so much easier to put it in the pay code side, but he says he can't, even though he's got holiday pay in there and holiday without pay. Hmm. It would be so much easier to put every individual holiday in there and say pay or not pay, you know, so it's mm. taken or not. Well, we need an on-site, you know, support person here to sit down with you for an hour. Or two or three. We, well, we've talked about it the last time. He said it can't be done, but a pay code is a pay code. Yeah, if they sit there what we're doing is working out all the little kinks, but the nursing home has so many different little nuances that do not pertain to everybody else that we got to make sure they're squared away on that because we don't know until we start getting in there and doing it. And I think you must have just about as many nuances as I do. You've got people that split shifts and... Mm -hmm work in different areas and you have to put in the extra lines and mm -hmm. I don't think our contract's unique to being able to take it the month before, the month during, and the month after for holidays. Mm. Well, I haven't that much trouble really. I spend about 15 minutes a day on it yep. every day and uh, you know it, if the hours are punched in there it, it's pretty simple. It yeah, see we're not punching yet. When they and were it was a lot simpler than it and is weekly now. or ever bi-weekly? Each person has a schedule and that's the schedule they work. So if they happen to work a different schedule, it, it really doesn't reflect. It will just show a flag. It will say late punch, early punch. Mm -hmm. But the hours are still accrued the same. But if you had an interest in tracking that and you wanted to use that for a performance tool, you could change their schedules. Correct. And it would show just the red box around so you can see, you know, that week this person if, was late four right. times. Um, if, you, right. if that's a concern. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a bad idea in some yeah, cases. We're changing, obviously changing people around a lot too, based mm -hmm. on the phone calls and who's calling in. And you know, Sometimes they'll take a diet aid and they may work in a cook's slot for mm -hmm. part of a day and need to pay them a different rate. So he said to transition it, which is fine. I don't have any problem transitioning that way, but the problem I have is tracking holidays. I don't want to have to put a sticket note in every person and then when you run the accrual to find out your holidays, you have to count them by hand. Well, I'm already doing that in different programs, so mm -hmm. I thought the whole point of this was, mm -hmm. you know, we could chase holidays down a lot easier than we're doing now and we can't. Well, it's kind of a different situation at the jail because we don't get paid for holidays. We get a, we get a check at the end of the year for mm -hmm. Oh, that would make my life so much easier. So. <laughs> But negotiations are coming yeah, up. So, that's so, a we'll contract. Contract. so the only holidays there is I have to keep track of is just the ones that the uh, the captain and the superintendent take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have that luxury. That's interesting. Yeah. Has, has anybody run into any other issues with that? Or I just had a question, and I'm not so sure I didn't misunderstand what you were saying because now when you're talking about holidays, I'm thinking maybe that was what you were referring to. Were you saying that people could take their vacations before they've earned them? No, holidays. holidays. Just the holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So holidays and just birthdays. clarifying that. Okay. The month before, the month during, or the month after? I gotcha. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, trying to make sure everybody gets their holidays is <coughs> going to be a real... Oh, trying to make sure they only get one holiday. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> That's a whole different issue. Mm -hmm. Well, because they forget, too. I mean, no offense, right. you're requesting it a month in advance. Sure. Then you come to the month after, and you're not sure whether right. you took it's it like, oh or not, or did I get paid it. for it, and then it's, they resubmit it. So we run holidays in a whole separate Excel spreadsheet because there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. and then depending on the hours you work depends on which holidays you work because some people that are not working full-time get... 12 holidays and then those that are working 20 hours get eight holidays and they have they're the ones that determine which holidays they give up so it's it's a lot of challenge yeah, for sure. mm. can I can I ask a question sure. um, where are do you, where do you where does your staff sign in either we swipe or punching they in. can do it in the hallway where you guys do we also have one inside right outside uh, the sheriff's door uh, you know we, we you know, we've already discussed this, but we, we have a problem with that being in public area. Um, the fact that anybody, and you have people come in and out to your department, I have people come in and out to my department, as any office here does. And I don't think it should be in a place where everybody should be able to poke in numbers. They can play with those numbers. It doesn't take a genius to figure them out. But there's no 
information in there. There's no social security numbers. There's nothing in there. It, it was a matter for my staff when they found out that you could see how much holiday and, and um, vacation that you had and they felt other people that might know their numbers. They're not that hard to, you know, you don't have to move too many times to find people. Um, we're available to other people. I guess that was kind of a privacy thing. It's public record anyway, isn't it? Ultimately. I don't know. I, uh, unless it becomes an issue, I guess. With, uh, with IT, unless it becomes an issue, I don't, I'd probably rather not make it an issue. But mm -hmm. I can see the concern, but especially with our pay and our holidays and everything's a matter of public record. Someone can call me up tomorrow and ask me, mm -hmm. you know, this or that stuff. I'm, I'm not, not talking about that part. I'm talking about, there's a lot of times there's kids. People are waiting to talk to somebody in yours, and there's kids going back and forth and they just touch them because it's something that's there yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and I don't know whether that's, that's ever going to be a problem with someone's timesheet <laughs> you know with whatever they punch mm. you know that was mm. that's truly my concern was that I can tell you honestly now we're just starting this yeah. but there have been people that have been using this system all along I haven't seen it but a lot of places that use them it is a workers situation and not a, out, out in, the, in the public area Yes and no. Okay. I, well, I who think sleeps in at that public area? You, you guys, mm -hmm. and you guys, we and do. Then you do, right? County attorneys, mm -hmm. Jerry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everyone in the building but us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I well, see. I have and you one guys in the could front if you wanted to. Right. Right. You right. We have one inside our. I, I could. I could fully appreciate it if there was any personal identifying information other than a name. No, I just met somebody that could go in and let, and when they do it, that make and it look like you logged in or out at a different time. That that was more what yeah. I was concerned with. But we're we're also going to be very shortly at a point where somebody can view their time right on the screen, and if they see that there's a, a punch in there that looks odd, all they have to I do understand. is call one yep. of the many people, and we can fix that for them right away. There's nothing that is done at the clock that can't be undone. Yep. Which is a good thing. Mm. Yeah. Not always monitored and recorded. So. Yeah, you know, it's funny because a lot of people, you know, who are on uh, more or less time clock or whatever you want to call, it, are just logging in on their computers. I'm talking about other businesses. They yeah. just come in and yeah. they log in on their computer yeah. the minute they arrive, and that's how their hours are kept. Yeah. Um, but it's different, you know. And I do sympathize with the three shifts. I think it's just mm -hmm. going to be. I wouldn't want to have to log in by when I got my computer access because sometimes it does phone calls and people coming into the office. It could be two hours before I had a chance to get to my is, computer. That happens a lot. You would be surprised. Um, I know just when I was working uh, for Lowe's, people clocked in at the different computers at, on the sales floor. The minute they walked on the floor, they were interrupted. They, right. It was a constant thing. It happens just when I get out of my car sometimes. <laughs> I don't even get into the building. So Yeah. yeah. But I, I think it's just something new, and people will get used yeah. to it. But there's no, just reassure that there's no identifying information on there other than their name. Their address isn't there, their social, their date of birth, nothing oh, is on that. there. No matter what you play around with or push, you're not no, going to get that info. I know, can't get any further with it than that. Yep. I mean, if, if that were the case, then I would. We can put pseudo names in there. <laughs> like Everybody have a nickname? Susie Q is really Kathy <laughs> Armstrong. <laughs> and again, anything that is done can be undone. That's the beauty of this system. It's not over yeah. until that button's pushed, and even after the button's pushed to reconcile and approve all time cards, you can still go back and do historical edits. So I don't know how we're doing that. You know, it's not part of our system. So do I? I have to go. I think down to your office in order to do that. Is that right? To approve the. Yes, I think that's how it was originally set up yeah. for you guys because Robin was going to have me doing that, but you could certainly come down and do it yourself mm -hmm. once we do that. Well, sort of yeah, stuff. Pam was going to be our person, but I was yeah. just um, verifying that. Yeah. That's just because you you didn't have a computer to access. <laughs> so, <laughs> would reason. you we try work to in get the your days. groups and anybody that's having an issue, let me know. Um, I'm going to be meeting with sheriffs today, and then I owe. Susan in activities a meeting with her to sit down with her and help her just play around with it and navigate. Well, I think she thinks she's going to put schedules in with her. 
So that's that exactly was, what I said. Right. So that I would show her how to do it and sit down with her. That was the other thing how I wanted to know is who's going to have what approvals. You all tell me. All right, I'll tell you. You tell me. I can give access to whoever needs it. And this should always be a backup, too, in case yep. that person is unavailable. Yep. So you tell me who you want, <coughs> and we can narrow it or increase their visibility as to you know, how okay. we should have everyone. I would think you should have everyone, and then department managers can see Put their the own. schedules and see their Okay. Let me know. Yep, we can expand it. Okay, so we will try and get out the 300 employee numbers so that they can start using them. Yeah. Have you, so you've turned all your employees? Bob's turned all his into mm -hmm. uh, Well, I have. I don't know about, I don't know about yes. Bob. Bob has. Okay. And Debbie has. Erickson. Given all the employee numbers? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how he needs to give all his and I will mm -hmm. give all mine then. Yep. I got through the last of them. They're all on the timesheets. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's easy just to have a spreadsheet anyway, so. No, I, I know, but I mean, everybody's been still getting it. It's yeah. right there on that sticker. Right. So. It's your employee number. Oh, I know where the employee numbers are. <laughs> they thought those were codes for us only. They didn't realize they were. Yep. A lot of people don't know that they have an employee number. What those number. are. <laughs> okay. So there's so a lot of things. we burn the badges? You can burn the badges. Okay. Oh, so they're, they're done? They're done. They're history. Oh, that'll please some people. Um, yeah, mine last, is getting worn out. <laughs> last thing it's that I wanted apart. to just talk about, and then we can throw it open to everything, is the website. As we continue to develop the website, there's an employee button on there. Is there anything that you folks feel should be out there posted? Is there anything you want? for your department out there and posted? Having wanted to put the um, contact, a tie-in to the health educator network that we're doing for in-service training at the home. Okay. And that's for all the employees at the home, so. That, that we, we can, can link. They can do it at, they can actually do this at home, so they could, they will not get paid for it if they do in-servicing at home, but they can do it at home. Okay. We thought that that could be the one button to shoot them off. Are they gonna do the mandates? Are we doing mandates on yep. that? Mm -hmm. That's good. All the mandates will be there too, so that's why we said they could do them from home. We are going to put the reference guide once it's been approved in total. I don't know if you've been watching the meetings, but we're going a couple of pages at a time. Some training on how to use Cronus would be good. Yeah. <laughs> but in, out there on this? Yeah. For employees? Yeah, for those that forget how to okay. do different things. So that's just within the employee circle? Mm -hmm. It's actually, we can't limit it. So whatever you put under there for employees, Joe Schmo can come in and mm -hmm. pop on that button. And mm -hmm. So you might want to consider that as well. Mm. So yeah, I had asked if there was any way just to limit that to employees by punching in like their employee number. Mm. I think we probably could somewhere down the road, but we're not there at this point. You're kidding me. Mm -hmm. So we need to be a little cautious. A little bit. But is that limited to education programs or? No, it doesn't have to be. I want to put, you know, some workers' comp information out there. Okay, um, so it's employee to, info. Yeah, links to our different um, benefit providers. And, the okay. FMLA paperwork? Yeah, that was good. Anything else you can think of? Well, the menus are already going on, so the cafe. Is that on? Is that on the county website? Mm -hmm. hmm. I, sorry, I don't go on that website. What about um, what about the um, nursing home newsletter and all that? Does that go on there? I know it comes around. Do you guys still have? Doesn't the nursing home still have their own web thing? Um. Yes. Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Really? It's a Facebook, isn't it? Is that what they do on okay. Facebook? Oh, Facebook page? That's cool. But I think, no, the, the nursing home has a sub-website off the website, yes. If you click on that, it takes yeah, you to the you nursing home Yeah, because the nursing website. home had a website way before the county had one. Just like the sheriff's department. But I don't think that's active anymore. Well, that's what I'm asking. Well, Is I think if you go to the county government one and you click on the nursing home, it does bring you up to the nursing home website. Right. It's linked in now. 
where right. before it was. But it's not maintained now. Lisa's just maintaining. Lisa still that does the no. Facebook. Somebody else is doing that. Chandler is doing the Facebook. Oh, he's doing that. Okay. Is someone going to upload the awards that your employees got? Yes. The pictures. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Good. Who does that for the gym? The captain does okay. that. Perfect. Would be nice to see. You know, I have no skills with website design or maintenance, as I complain week after week. Um, not because people haven't tried to teach me. I just either don't get it or I'm doing something wrong. But um, if we have somebody with a big skill set out there that wants to improve or make suggestions as to how to make it better, look better, more user-friendly, other things that we can put out there, we certainly welcome the input. Who's in charge of the updates to the website? Deb does a way. lot of them. Yeah. Um, Lisa Howard has been helping. Paula Coates has been helping. Um, Captain Fowler, who for the sheriff's office? Uh, Teresa. Teresa Shackham. Um, it's been a collaborative effort. I will tell you that people don't look for job openings under human resources. Where should those be? Separate they button should be a separate openings. button for job openings because yeah, cause I've be had a number of people say to me, I go to the website, there's nothing there, and I go, go under HR, because a lot of people don't think of yeah. looking under yeah. a HR well, tab for job yeah, openings. Yeah, have its own little thing on the main that's page. A, that's, that's a, a big good factor. idea. Yeah, that's yeah. a very good idea. Anything else? Any wish lists, concerns? Well, in dietary, I know we need a Wi-Fi available in the kitchen, in the walk-in coolers, and we had spec'd it in the original plans, or it was discussed, but it was never actually installed. So I, I'm in a dead zone in the nursing home, and I'm wanting to go to electronic inventory and ordering, and I, I can't do that. I'm still manual. But well, you down. can come over here now. Down the road, you know, I'd like to just be able to scan what my inventory is. Barcoded, yeah, barcodes, yeah. But that that doesn't cost much, does it? I don't think so. And we discussed it with Bob, and I know it was discussed with John with Cybertron it's too. It's probably those metal walls you have in the freezer. Never mind <laughs> the temperature. Yeah, they just have to drop. You know, I, but I, I know it was the wiring and things like that. So there was some expense involved. But do you know how I, much? Is that something you budgeted for, or? <clears throat> I think you'd have to go back to the original plans. I, you're right. I, I believe I heard before that that was in the original plans, but it got dropped out. Hmm. That so might be worth looking at. It's on the wish list of, you know, let's include it so right. we can get going with that. Right. Anything else? No, I'm just looking for the, at the 2014 budget to possibly have refrigerators controlled uh, temperature monitoring um, by wireless thermometers, and it's not really an expensive program, but we could do all of the refrigeration at DOC, plus dietary, plus med refrigerators. Plus they can call you at home when something's gone off and you yeah. can adjust. Mm. I would think that would be an energy savings too, though. Uh, it would be a time saver, and it would be a good record keeper too, because the, you know, the regulations require that any of that food or medication be controlled mm. in terms of temperature. We have manual records, but mm. as we get more into you know the IT environment, we should be converting. That. Well, we should be looking at a whole system because you mentioned the medications as well, and that became an issue down south when they got surveyed last that their medication room was consistently five degrees too high, and they got cited for it. Mm. So it can be installed for. About forty-two hundred dollars. Why are you waiting till two thousand fourteen? Because while well, the budget, it's just budget <laughs> process is already <laughs> <laughs> three quarters of the way through, and that's for all three facilities for the Any, anywhere that we would need, and then to add on to it, it's pretty inexpensive because right. once you have you mm -hmm. know the system set up, then just getting a remote read. You know, it would be easy. I mean, if there was any other, I mean, if we had any thing in the sheriff's department that needed monitoring, we could do that as well. It would seem to me you could lose that kind of money in a refrigerator or something. Easily, yeah. Easily. Medications. 
Is that 4200 to install it, or is that with the equipment as well? It's, it's the equipment, and I, I put had 16 monitors. And the installation, either our IT can install it or they, they install it for 3000 If you have them. Additional? Hmm. It's a company called Sensa Scientific. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something definitely for the wish list. Mm -hmm. well, it really sounds like a preventative measure. Yeah. It is, because it would signal, you know, and you can get the signal either, you know, through a cell phone or, mm -hmm. you know, it'll phone you, or, and, and it can be changed easily from one yeah. person to another. Wow. Hmm. That's what I mean about the technology. That's well, Bob does that now with Humif humidification and stuff with the boilers and stuff, it, it will send him a note saying something's off and he can go right in and look at it. Isn't that great? Okay. Okay. Anything else? So the big push again is Kronos. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Dockstar or a similar company will be on the horizon soon. Um, we're going to have to really start looking at Contracts coming up for IT, not too distant future. Start that whole process, which I have not been through before, so I'll be looking to others that did go through it previously. But in terms of um, you know a master plan, uh, they are going to be looking to this group for some recommendations and so forth. For we're looking into electronic medical records. We're also looking into what else, how we can tie electronic medical records into. Uh, MDS is nice because we have to have electronic medical records. Well, it was supposed to be 213, and then they pushed it to 214. Now it's 215, but I don't yeah. think they're going to push it beyond 215. Right. So we are actually looking at three vendors right now on the MDS side that could integrate into an electronic medical record. So they could work with a company like Docstar, is that what you mean? No. They're totally separate. They're, like right now we use Keen for our, our payroll, our um, accounts payable and all that and MDS. Okay. We have to find something that works with Keen if we go away from that for MDS. Okay. But the two, the, the one that's out there is Point Click Care, which is a whole nother program. They have a financial side. The Care Tracker just came out with a brand new, they're beta, they've beta tested it out in um, Ohio and stuff. That's a whole complete suite. They don't have the backside. They have the electronic record, the MDS, and the nurses' notes that we're using now, plus they are coming out with the financial side next year. Mm -hmm. So that'd be nice to get everything all under one. And then roof. it could all go into Darkstar. And you don't have a choice either. I mean, you're gonna have to. We're well, gonna have to keep an audit trail of some kind, either by paper or by electronic. Mm -hmm. It'd be so much easier to do it electronically. Well, that we're mandated, I think, aren't we, but in 2014 to do that federally? Or well, is that part of the Affordable Care Act? No, it's, it was part of HIPAA. It's actually part of HIPAA. They've pushed off nursing homes. Hospitals went first, then nursing mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, how far is Kronos out now? We're not far. I'm, like I said, the next step is to get all the accruals over. Then I've got to go around, <coughs> but you're all set. I mean, I know you know what to do. Have you ever, though, have you ever signed off on a payroll? Yes. Okay. <coughs> you're right where you need to be. I've got no, to get to everybody else. The thing I haven't done else. yet is send it to uh, Kathy. Mm -hmm. And you say we need more software for that, or? No. Actually, they just need to turn that on so they are talking to each other. It's so all there. It's all in place. But I don't want to do that and have people sending over things with exceptions mm -hmm. and mm. this time. Right. So I guess what I need, what I need now is just the accruals. That's all you personally need right now. You folks are all set. Have you got a backup though? Trained for if you take a vacation or? No, not. No, you I might want to focus on that. Starting somebody very slowly and how to showing them how to do it and let me know who they are and we'll give them the training and the access so that they can see folks, because you are not always going to be there on, <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on now. the day we need you there. <laughs> it's just the way it happens. 
but you're all set. Everybody else, we need to make sure that they are exactly where they need to be, schedules in place, or, or at least know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And going in and approving time and knowing that they can't close out a payroll if there's exceptions out there. It will still let you, but you're not supposed to. Right. Because the person's time isn't going to be right. Once we've got all that squared away, then we'll turn on the link and we'll be off and running and do away with the paper. With the exception of some of the funky stuff, the paper is still going to have to come over. Well, we'll probably still use paper for a little while. Oh, yeah. We tool. have to run yeah. both for a while. Most definitely. Okay. And then hopefully we'll get to the fun part where we start looking at reports and get in, into a little bit more of the sophisticated stuff with it. Um, so you can see the different ways you can use it as a tool to, for you know, maximum scheduling for you and... Oh, a lot of things I do on an Excel sheet right now as far as scheduling and what uh, yeah. days off, this will do it for yep. me. It will. Once the accruals are right. Yep. It's going to save you a lot of time. Well, I'm going to put schedules in. He's got all the schedules. Um, you want to do some of mine? I'm going to do That's what I mean. That's why I tested these two because they all have the same hours. Yeah. Easy, easy. And he's so far ahead of the game in terms of everybody else with the schedules in and I checking can go time. In and create one. Mm -hmm. So it isn't that hard to do. I know. I just got this many to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can go change them. How long does it take? What? If somebody comes in and said, I need the next three days off, you can go in and just easily change that oh, schedule. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Point and click. I so, really to Rob, you actually might want to meet with Janice and mm -hmm. have her show you how to change schedules, mm -hmm. rather than like just having Paula doing it. Yep. I know. So, because even in there, you guys are you're going to be a lot easier than I am. Mm -hmm. Are you are you the folks with the five week rotation? Is that what you were saying, or is that Bob Murray? That's Bob Murray. Yeah, Bob Murray has yeah, five week no. rotation. Mm -hmm. I have a master schedule, but you know it's we have daily rotations. <coughs> it changes. Yeah, that's the pain. Every hour. Yeah. But anybody that is fixed, get them in the system if they have a fixed schedule generally, mm -hmm. because you're not going to have to mess with them. Yeah, so I'll they're done. I can definitely get the master in, and then we're just going and adjusting it. Mm -hmm. But the adjustments once the master's in there is just click that person off and add it to that person. It's Yes. Sure we can do the commissioners had uh, mentioned wanting their own individual email addresses. Mm -hmm. Yes, I heard that. Um, they'll mention it tomorrow, I'm sure. Yeah. But I wasn't here for the meeting, so did they want it off the computer in the commissioner's office? Do they want their own separate? I, I'm not sure I understand. They wanted their own county. Carroll County email per address. commissioner. Correct. Instead of one general. Okay. They just need to make up their mind because that's originally they all had individual ones and then they decided they were going to share it and now they're back to that. So it okay. just needs to be established what they want. We'll the, other, their own. the other thing that came up out of the last meeting as I was reviewing it was that uh, it was mentioned that people use their private emails as business emails for the county. Yes. Why? I, 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 that threw me too because everybody I know over at the home has a business email. So I don't know who's using their... Who are they referring to? Yeah, who's using their own private because one of the guidelines for our IT is you can't, you can't access your private email at work, so... Yes, I explained that to them because mm. you, if I want to put a 91A request in for an email, I then have to subpoena Yahoo, Gmail, mm -hmm. or whatever they use. But I guess my more concern was is that it's against policy for anybody to access their own private email at work. So I guess my concern is is that I was wondering who's accessing private email to use. I don't, I don't think it came up in that context. I think it was more like if someone was working from home and responding to something. I don't know. Okay. I, see, I, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even Somebody on the outside, if I want to email one of the commissioners, I should not be going to their personal email address. It should go to this email, should the email be. that's for this county, right. on the servers here, 
the, electri the electronic record of that email should be sit kept here, not in Yahoo or Gmail. If okay. that's not secure, it should be here for public access. So you're sending an email from your private account to the county is what you were talking about. No, for example, when I usually, when I send out an email to the commissioners knowing that they're only here on Wednesdays, I send it first to the commissioners' joint mailbox and then individually to the three of them to make sure they get it uh, so at yeah, some okay. point. Yeah, it's kind of awkward to contact them by email when they're only in this office mm -hmm. on Wednesdays. Okay. I just never so. think like that because if I'm going to work for the county, I do my VPN off my computer at work. I mm -hmm. would never use my private email coming in. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. It. So mm -hmm. that's just, I thought you meant at work they were using it to respond back and forth. Well, technically, they should be able to access the email from home. It's just that the, the actual message should be left here. Right. Because you can set your outside email protocols to go mm -hmm. in, take the email out, and then but it still keeps it here. Right. Correct. That, that was it. Okay. Because I think Commissioner Babson was complaining that he had been copied so many times he had 600 I think emails. he mentioned me. Because <laughs> I do. I always send it to the commissioners and then individually. Okay. Well, that just threw me because I was wondering about it. They'll be all set once they have those three individual county ones. Mm. And then you j just start using that. Yeah. Because you're right. You, they can sign into that from wherever. Wherever. That's Is there any advantage for us to have uh, a web address that's a public, like a .gov? I mean, I see some counties use that. We're using a .net or a .org or... We do actually have one through the website, and yeah. it goes to DAB, and then DAB distributes from there. Yeah, it's like a general it. inquiry type of a thing. So, I mean, is there any advantage for the whole county to have a, an email address that's easier to understand for anybody? We do. It's on the general, if they can type in Carroll County, there is a comment thing, and if you put it in oh, there, I mean, it goes to for them. for, like, us. For the, I mean, the home? I just I uh, notice other counties are using you know, uh, you at, know well like dot at, county yeah. dot New Hampshire dot US. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the advantage or disadvantage is. Of I mean, somebody has to check it. I mean, I know like Huggins uses Ask Huggins dot whatever. It's an mm -hmm. email address. Ask Huggins. If you can't get a response anywhere else, just send something in to Ask Huggins, and they'll respond back to it. I suppose every department here could have a Ask, whatever. Yeah, like you, I think he's talking about like with the state has like dot gov. at dos dot state dot nh dot gov mm -hmm. and it's all the end of it's all the same for every state employee. So, right, oh, exactly. right. So, well, because that's because like, every they have their own server and they set theirs up. That's why it's CC. Right. And that's you right. guys have your at Mountain View, or yeah, whatever we it have is. Separate now. servers. That's it was why. it was separately set up at different time frames and everything. That's why. Because so everybody it. here in in our office, and we are all at C Carroll County, NH. NH net. So mm -hmm. I'm not. No, because you chose to <laughs> tell. No, because there wasn't one when I started, for one thing. And uh, from everything I've read, Yahoo's the most protected. And I only use it for government. I do not have personal email. I do not give out my email to my kids or anybody else. <laughs> they are not to use it. I only use it. It's usually amongst other registers or legislators. Right? But different from an IT complex, though, this is a complex, and I will be so glad when, no offense, we shouldn't have to dial outside numbers to mm. get other buildings. Right. <laughs> Still haven't learned all the other numbers. I we mean, have it in the building. In the building. In, down the line, do we ought to be able to figure out how we can get everybody on the county complex to be able to talk to each well, other without yeah. having to dial the problem additional is the numbers. Because of different phone bills, that's the whole issue. It's okay. like we have our own phone bill, you have your phone bill, and it does, it's all has to do with billing. I know, but we. Yep, I agree. The place I worked before, they can break it apart. They just assign yeah. that phone a different number so they can see it on the bill. Wonderful. Well, we have to have the system that can do that. <laughs> Our system is. Well, you guys always are ahead of the game <laughs> and everything. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, those, those two probably just have to have the same system. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. If you think of anything else, just shoot me an email and I'll include it in the minutes and hopefully get this How often posted. does this committee meet? I think it's once a quarter, isn't it? 
Well, depends. Or as needed? Depends, as needed. But I think it was set up originally to be at least every two months, but I don't think that's that's been what's happened. In fact, I was waiting for the email to say that our meeting was canceled. It happens a lot of times. It was meant to have one, but you mm -hmm. know, if you don't get enough people, it's not mm -hmm. worthwhile. It's right. hard. Hmm? It's hard taking the time. It is hard. Really we all have double the time today, but I'm here. But yeah. I, I've been hearing Tuesdays is not a good day. Is that true? It's is not there good a for better me. day of the week? So that I know we used to do it on Thursdays. John Rich would like either Monday or Wednesday because he's saw he's already here. Wednesdays, Wednesdays is a bad day. Commissioner's day. It's Mondays out. Mondays and Tuesdays are really bad days for me. Okay. Wednesdays I couldn't care less. We could do it in the <laughs> afternoon on Wednesday. I don't really care. After that I'm I'm good. But, but Mondays and Tuesdays are really hard for me. Okay. Those are the days we have delegation or commissioners we could interfere with anybody else's mm -hmm. goings on. So I've always, even my registers meetings tend to be on Wednesdays as well. So I always tell people just to just avoid Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. We're usually okay. And okay. now this delegation meeting is Friday, so you can't figure. Okay. And I had made doctor's appointments for that one, so, you know. We have meetings set up every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, from 1 o'clock on, so whatever. So there's really just no good no, time for everybody. Just, there's not Who can get there okay. for what meeting and... We have to work the best we can. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. you.